I'm Keith Beattie. I work here at Ballymoney Museum in County Antrim. And this is recognised as probably the spiritual home of road racing in Ireland. It's the place where the most famous Irish road racer was born and lived, Joey Dunlop. And here in the museum we celebrate his triumphs and commemorate his victories, along with many of the other riders from this area that did so well in this very popular sport. Road racing didn't begin on the roads. Ironically, it began on the beaches, McGilligan Strand, right up in the north of Ireland. And at that time, racing motorcycles on road was actually illegal, so the only place they could get a, a bunch of riders together and race was on the strand, on the beach. And in fact, McGilligan was the location for some of the Ulster and Irish championships. And here we have some trophies belonging to a man named Malcolm McQuig, who raced back then. By the time you come round to 1929, road racing had started. The first uh, Ulster Grand Prix had taken place and many others. And in 1929, you have the first Northwest 200. The circuit ran from Coleraine to Port Rush, Port Stewart. And Malcolm O'Quig was one of the first winners. And here, the family of Lentis' trophies. We also have some small replica trophies in this cabinet, which go back to the Ballamoney Motorcycle and Light Car Club of the 1920s. So road racing in Ballamoney can be traced back as far as that. And this is just a group of enthusiasts who enjoyed the sport, who put on their own events. And indeed, many of the individuals involved in that club went on to work on the Northwest 200 in 1929. And the Northwest grew very quickly into an international event and has become the mammoth sporting occasion that it is today. If we move a bit along, we come to another cabinet which has the leathers and helmet and some plaques belonging to Richard Craith. Now, Richard was a unique individual. He was a born road racer. He had talent that could have taken him very, very far. He won the Ulster Grand Prix and he won the Northwest 200. And in 1965, when he was at the peak of his, his career, he decided just to retire and went home to Bush Mills, back to the farm. And he's not unique in, in that approach. And we have Ray McCulloch, who had raced at that time and continued to the 1970s. Ray was in the Dramara Destroyers. He beat world champions in 1971 at the Ulster Grand Prix. And he beat all comers, basically. But he chose not to, to race to compete abroad. He preferred just to race on his home turf. And he became quite a local hero as well. Joy Dunlop will always be everybody's road racing motorcycle icon. But for every fan of Joy Dunlop, they also have their other favourites. People like Adrian Archibald and Robert, Joey's brother. And even the smallest guy in the smallest operation that goes out in that circuit will have fans cheering when he goes round, willing him the best. And that's the one thing about this sport. It's the loyalty, it's the excitement that it generates in the fans, and it's the dedication that those fans have to, to go along in all weathers and watch their heroes race. We're approaching a century of, of road racing in, in Ireland and thankfully there's a photographic and a, indeed a film record in some respects that records some of the biggest and best occasions in that century and these are wonderful reminders of those times. When we get to the likes of the 1960s, names like Tommy Robb and in the 50s Sammy Miller, I would never say these are forgotten heroes. Anybody that saw these guys race would never forget them. They were their legendary sportsmen of the time. So it's not that we're trying to bring these people's memories back it's more that we're trying to promote what they did and to make sure that folks today realize the sacrifices and the accomplishments and the skill of people 50 years ago and going further back when we see some of the equipment the bikes and the helmets that riders used it's, it's a phenomenal sight to see these men racing around at 60 miles an hour on these Vindy's machines and uh, competing just as hard as, as the riders do today. Probably, as I say, the, the most renowned, the most famous road racer was Joey Dunlop, and a, a close second would be Robert, his brother. Ballamoney is a place where people come to pay tribute to Joey's memory. He was killed in 2000 while racing. Robert, sadly, a couple of years ago, was also killed at the Northwest 200. We are fortunate enough to have helmets and leathers and trophies that the families lent us for to the display. And it's, the museum has become a place where folks come to share memories, to recall the wonderful races and the pleasure that these men gave while they were racing on the roads. The Memorial Garden, the Joy Dunlop Memorial Garden, has been open for several years now, and this year a uh, garden will open to honour Robert's memory as well. And this, I know, will bring more and more people through the town. The museum is a place where you'll find people that uh, are very familiar with Joy's achievements and uh, he was a, a hero to them, but you'll also find people that come in, maybe just tourists that don't know much about Joy, possibly have heard the name but don't understand what the big attraction is and that's part of our job to bring home the, the uniqueness and the, the amazing talent the man had and indeed Robert and 
We have some of Joey's colleagues from the Armoy Armada. We have material from them as well on display. And uh, it's a, a mixture of audience, as I say, that we get, but nobody goes away without the impression that uh, this is a special sport and uh, Northern Ireland and Ireland have achieved so much in, uh, on the roads on these motorcycles. Every year during the uh, motorcycle road racing season, we expand our display and fill the whole museum with motorcycle memorabilia trophies from the likes of Robert Dunlop. We have the old Northwest 200 trophies right back to 1929. We have motorcycles that are loan from collectors. We also expand our storyline and we include a lot more of the great names like Alec Bennett and Artie Bell and Sammy Miller, Ralph Bryans, Tom Hearn, and help to tell their story. It gives much more of a flavour of the sport and certainly we could fill probably two or three museums with this material but it's only up to this scale for four months of the year that's when we get our biggest crowds maybe three four thousand people during the the race week in the northwest 200 in may summer exhibition runs from may right through till the end of august every year online if you'd like to find out more details www.visitballamoney.com contact the museum at 028 2766 0230